uh, we're going to learn the Maimer Lekut Teira Anila Daidi, and we're using this uh, as a text. Uh, uh, if you have that, it would be wonderful if you could use it. If not, just get a Lekut Teira, and in, in the section that's under Devarim, page Lamed Beis, 32. But I want to give an introduction to the Maimer. This is the um, the famous Maimer of the Alter Rebbe, known as Anila Daidi. And in Lekut Torah, there are two Maimorim of Anili Doidi, okay? The thing is that the, um, the Maimor of Lekut Torah is an important one because it sets the, the agenda for, for the month of Elul. What do I mean? So I'm going to say it orally and, and ask you when, on your own to read uh, page Vav, uh, through the top of page Zion, the Psicha. Uh, this is a very, very good Psicha. Uh, to read it inside and to explain it will just take a long time, and uh, therefore I'm just going to repeat briefly what it says there, but on your own, I encourage you to read it uh, line by line. And basically, uh, let me begin with, uh, with, with a saying. In Brisk, you've heard of Brisk, Reb Chaim Brisker, Reb Velvola Brisker, they, they called him the Brisker of, in Brisk they would say that during the month of Elul, even the fish in the pond tremble. That was the saying of the Brisker, right? That the fear that the uh, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is coming, Elul, you have to be scared, you have to tremble. And it, the, the, the fear is so much that even the fish, the fish, are impacted. In Lakuti de Burim, which is a collection of the previous Rebbe's Fab- Sichas, Fabrengans, he says there that in Lubavitch, one can tell a difference in the air as Elul was approaching. Erev Rishchaydish, Rishchaydish. So, in, in Lakuti de Burim, he doesn't say that the fish are trembling. He says you can feel a difference in the air. The Rebbe once explained this, and I'm, I'm going to leave that maybe for another time. What, what the symbolism of the air, the, the atmosphere, the environment was different. But for our purposes now, this is the point I'd like to share based on this introduction. The Alter Rebbe does something here that's very, very unusual, unconventional, and very different to the way Torah liturgy has looked has looked at at um, at Elul. One second. I'm learning now. I can't. I can't. So until until the Alter Rebbe, the the. When Elul came, people became very scared. Now we're talking about, you know, even the commoner or the simple person on the street, because most people were not Talbid Chacham and learning the yeshivas. Okay, let's, let's, let's remember what we're talking about. Nevertheless, when Elul came, you know, they, they, they started to think about Yom Adin, the Day of Judgment, and they got very scared. The Alter Rebbe, in the first chapter of this Maimar, Anil Adoidi, he talks about revelation. He talks about um, ability to connect to something deeper in yourself and to experience something greater within the weekday. In other words, the Alter Rebbe explores and finds in the month of Elul the greatest way of connecting to Hashem which is more in the line of simcha and ava, joy and love. And that's a, a very different approach than the attitude to going to, to, to Elul as the fear uh, that, we, that, we, that we'll, we should have because of the Yom Adin. Now I want, I want to make it very clear so we don't make any mistakes. And people listen to this shiurim, they should also understand this. The Alter Rebbe doesn't say you don't have to have fear. That's not what he says. 
He's saying that the way to articulate your fear, your yira, is through knowing who you are. And if you want the experience of fear for God to be truthful, you need to know who you are. You see? And only after knowing who you are, who you are spiritually, and who and what and what's what's going on with your soul, then your 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 concern about your transgressions and the day of judgment is real. Otherwise, it's not real. It's imaginary or fantasy. And lots of people live with fantasies and imag imaginations and wanna be. And this is the whole approach of the Alter Reb and Chabad Hasidus. And this answers another question. Why does Chabad Hasidus delve into these spiritual mystical concepts that seem to be so far from reality of, 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 the, of regular man? And the answer is because when you explore yourself and you explore your neshama, yourself meaning your soul, your neshama, then your whole attitude towards life towards Torah, towards family, towards community, is a very different one. And then, and then, the, the feelings of judgment and fear are real. Otherwise, they're like the Alter Rebbe says in, in, at the end of chapter 3 of Tanya, Dimyonos Shav. You know what Dimyonos Shav means, Hillel? Baba Mice is in Yiddish. <laughs> Fantasies. A dimyon. Yeah. You know, it's a dimyon. You know, you know, so this, this now now again, I'm not saying that the the brisker attitude of Elo that the fish are trembling in the water, that even that's how fearful we have to be on on Elo is not a mahalach, is not an approach. It is an approach. It's 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 it's, it's that approach that that they and and others chose to to take and kol kavod. You know, it's it's Torah and it's holy. I'm not chaser shalom pupuing it. But at the same time, the Alter Rebbe's Chiddush, and that's why we learn this on the Yiladoidi and we share it with everyone, is that we begin with knowing who you are. And guess what? Every single Yid is special. There's no such a thing that a Yid is not special. Even a Yid who's a sinner and a transgressor is special. Why? Because he has a Neshama. But you say his Neshama is fashmutz, has lots of dirt. Okay. So find your neshama, and Dalt Rebbe talks about that later in chapter um, in chapter three. Ubi kashtem isham, search over there. You, yes, there is a time when we're not just in a uh, in a city, and we're not in a field. We're in a desert, in a midbar. Eretz loizarua. He quotes the verse, and the literal meaning is a land. It's earth that doesn't give plantation, right? Moshe, it's it's, it's the desert. Dalt Rebbe says a different kvetch. A different emphasis in Eretz Lezerua. Not only does it not give vegetation, it's against vegetation. Eretz Loi. You know what's planted in a desert? Zerua. Loi. Negativity. <laughs> so it's not only that I didn't yet get a chance to learn. I know what learning is. And I know what davening is. And I'm against it. That's, that's much worse, says the Alter Rebbe. Even there, Ubikashtemisham, you have to go there and find your Neshama there. And we'll talk about that later. So, what do we see? We see clearly the Alter Rebbe is not, you know, uh, pretending that he doesn't know that we have our issues. Of course he knows. But he says the healthy way is to know yourself. And as we discussed so many times, that if this is our approach, we'll have more success in all relationships. In every relationship with our kids and grandkids and rabbis and employers and friends, because you look at the neshama. So this is just a brief <coughs> introduction to the Mimer Ani Ledoidi. Now let's learn the Mimer inside. Ani Ledoidi Vedoidi Li. It says in Song of Songs, Shira Shirim. Of King Shlema, Ani Ledoidi, I am to my beloved Vidoidi Li, and my beloved is to me. You all know that the uh, Shira Shirim was written like a love story, a love, like a like um, a poem of of love. Who is the Doidi? The Doidi really refers to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, God Almighty. He is our beloved, the Jewish people's beloved. 
So the, the Shlaim Mamelech says, there is an experience called Ani, the Jew, who begins their relationship to the beloved one, to God, and the reciprocal effect is, Vedoidi li, and my beloved is to me. Mind you, there is another verse in, Shla, in, in, in Shira Shirim, which begins, Doidi li vaniloi. My beloved is to me, and I am to him. So it's explained when, it, so which is it? Make up your mind. Velvel, which is it? Anila doidi or doidi li? The answer is it's two different time periods. During Nisan, when God took us out of Mitzrayim, we were sunk, immersed in 40 Memtesh Shari Tuma. Yoyne said, who began the, 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 the process of healing? Hashem. Boom, zap. I don't care how dirty and how bad you are and what shtus you're into, I'm taking you out of there. I'm taking you out. Nigla, in the classical Jewish uh, term, Nigla, Aleyem, Melech, Malchi, Amglochem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Vegoalom. God revealed himself and he redeemed us. So did we earn it? No. Did we work for it? No. On the contrary, we were messed up. And God said, I want to do a nice thing for you guys. And he zaps us out and he sends us out and out you go. So what's that experience? That begins with Daidi. The beloved Hashem begins the process. That's the month of Nisan. Now we're coming upon the month of Tishrei. What is the process of the month of Tishrei? Anila Daidi. You have to begin the relationship. But when is that? Is that Tishrei and Elul? Because this mimer is Russia Tavis, right? Look at the next words. Russia Tavis Elul. In other words, Aleph, Lamed, Vov, Lamed, the first four letters of those four Hebrew words, the acronym is Russia Tavis Elul. So it's not Tishrei. And in classical Jewish thought, Nisan is Doidi Li, and Tishrei is Anila Doidi. But the Alter Rebbe doesn't say that. The Alter Rebbe says here, Rosh Tevis Elu. So right here we need to explore. And we need to understand. In other words, what we're saying is that, that Tishrei, which begins with our Aveda, literally davening and, and asking for a good year on Rosh Hashanah and the seal being on Yom Kippur, begins a month earlier. By the way, does anyone know what the word Elul means? Did you ever ask yourself that question? Well, I didn't ask myself the question for 60 years, but this year Hashem gave me <laughs> the question. What does the word Elul mean? Now you know that the names of the months, of our Hebrew months, began in Bovel. When we were sent out, when we, we, when we were chased out and exiled from Eretz Yisrael into Bavel, that's when the name of the months became the name of the months. So the word Elul, <clears throat> there's one place in Tanakh, I forget now where, I looked it up but I forget now, and Elul means chipush, to search. So, the month of Elul means to search. However, I believe that the, the name of months, some of them were given, if you can believe this, associated with, some say it was associated with Avodazara, and we took the Avodazara name and we transformed it, like the name Tammuz. I believe the word Tammuz, the name Tammuz, was a name of an Avodazara. And the Jewish people who were, you know, forced uh, and, and, and pressured by the Babylonians took that very same name and used it for a Dovah Bekdusha, for a holy item. We find this concept in, in, in Judaism. For example, in the 1600s, you know, uh, the late 1600s or so, going into the 1700s, the, the Polish, uh, the Polish... Uh, government, they forced the Jews to wear tails, 
Just like, you know, the, the Nazis in Machshimam forced us to wear yellow stars. So a way of identifying Jews in a, in a disgraceful way was through tales. Tales of, of, of you know, animal, animal hides. So what did we do? We made a streimel out of it. And they started to wear what's called today the streimel, the fur hat. Right? That's one of the explanations. So we find that when we were forced and oppressed, we took the negativity and we turned it into something holy. And so too it's with the names of the months. But the word Elul means to search. So we know that Anila Doidi Vidoidi Li, Rosh Tevis Elul, is about searching. And it begins with us searching. So therefore, that's in line with what it says that the, acti- the avoda of Tishrei is, begins with man, with us, not with God. Anila Doidi. So that's the Alter Rebbe's explanation. Not only is Rosh Hashanah no Kippur about our asking Hashem and davening and we begin the process to get a good year from God, we ask Him to respond with a good year for us, but it begins a month earlier. What is the concept? Elul begins the experience. Prinas literally means the level. But now, for our purposes, we'll call it the experience of I am to my beloved. Ani ledaidi. The ha'inu, this means, prinas isarusa dilatata. The experience called the arousal of below. Isarusa dilatata is Aramaic for his root dilemata. The awakening, the arousal of below. Meaning, we generate the relationship. We look into ourselves, we see what needs improvement, and in simple classical Jewish terms, we make a cheshben. We make an accounting, a reckoning. What did I do in the month of uh, other last year on the third day? Does anyone remember that? (laughs) I don't. But that's what we have to do. You have to start thinking about so Yoni, you maybe you remember on this and this day, your father wasn't feeling well, and you think about that day. That's what we mean. So you need to think, what happened this day? What happened this month? What happened this week? What did I do? How did I behave? That's the Aveda of this year, of this month. And you all know that a good businessman, if he doesn't make a, a, a cheshben, a reckoning, of his stock, at the end you get a balagan, as we say in Hebrew, right? You get a mishmash. You don't know if you're coming or you're going. You don't know where your head is and where your tail is. But I made so much money. Yeah, well, how much did you make? Maybe you're spending more and maybe you gave out too much. Or I made too little. How am I going to make more? All of that is through a cheshben. And the same is true, Velvel, in your field, in every field, Everyone has to look at themselves and what they did. That's the Avoida of Anila Doidi. This is the month. We have 30 days. Today is the first of the month. I'll continue back in the text. And this Cheshben of Anila Doidi, which we call the awakening, the arousal from below, it goes till Reish Hashanah of Yom Kippurim, Ay Kippurim, till Yom Kippur. They are days in which God, godliness is drawn, is given to the to us, lemata below. Bebchinas is galus. Not just given, but in a revealed way. So here you have to stop and ask yourself a question. Wait a minute. Didn't we just say that Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is also part of Anili Dodi? The Alter Rebbe says here that Elo is, on the, is, 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 the, is the activity that begins with us from below towards God. And then he says now, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is the activity of God bestowing his godliness to us below in a, in a revealed way. So make up your mind, Alter Rebbe, which one is it? 
before I go further, do you, do you follow the question? If not, I've got to repeat it. Moshe. Hello? Do we have people listening or understanding? Which one? Rabbi Dolphin, do you mind to repeat the question? I'd appreciate it. Okay. Please. The Alter Rebbe says in the text that that um, the, the month of Elul is Anil Adaydi. We begin the relationship. We, we look into ourselves. We make the cheshben and all that, right? And he says, and Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is when God draw, gives his God, he responds with his godly revelation to us. Now, isn't that, isn't that also, so isn't that not we beginning the relationship, but God beginning, the, reciprocating and giving us the giving us light. So, which, it, which is it? Which is it? This Elul and Tishrei, right? Before, I told you that the difference between Nisan and Tishrei is Nisan begins with God, take, right? He took us out. And Tishrei is we doubt unto Hashem, begins with us. But it doesn't seem to say that right here. Here it says in this Mimer right here that Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur that the El is Anil Adoidi. We begin the relationship. And Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is already God's response. So the answer is simple. When we compare El to T- when we compare, I'm sorry, Rosh Hashanah to Nisan, it's true. This goes back to something that I taught you many times and repeat it again. That in Chassidus, when you learn Chassidus, you have to always remember the rule of relativity. Einstein's rule of relativity. In Hebrew, it's Inyan Yachasi. Yoni, what does it mean, Inyan Yachasi? It depends, it depends, what? It depends, relevant, re- relevant. Depends, it depends in what context. It depends in what context. Right. It depends in what context. So when there's a, there's a discussion between Rosh Hashanah, uh, between Tishrei and Nisan, what I said earlier is true. Here we're not talking about Nisan. Here we're talking about uh, the, the one verse, Anil Adoidi and we're talking about Elul compared to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So therefore, it's true that if you look at this context and this scenario, <coughs> Elul is... I begin the process, we begin the process, and Tishrei, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is God's reciprocation and response to our, our calling to Him. That's the answer to the question. And what does He say happens, Tishrei? This is very interesting. The Alter Rebbe says that during that time, Hashem is bebchinas his galus. What does he mean? What you know? You, when you see these words, Hillel, in a mimer, especially the Alter Rebbe, it's not just you know to fill the page. He need he put in more words. When you see bebchinas his galus, you have to stop right there. What does that mean? In a level of revelation. In other words, ask yourself the following: What would godliness be like? if it wasn't revealed, and what is godliness like when it is revealed? And I think, right, it's pretty clear. Something, you go into a room. We're all sitting now in a room that's that's sunny and bright and lit up. Can we sit in the room without light? Absolutely. Can we hear the sheer without light? Yes. But when you sit in a room with light, especially good light, it's a whole different experience. I was told that Baruch Hasidim in Borough Park, you know, they made they they they, they made shuls in different blocks. The the, the main base medrash, and then there's like block you know shuls on the block. So they would ask the. Above the forty third. I'm sorry. Above the forty third, above the forty sixth, right? No, the, 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 above, this is the above the forty eighth. Right? This is before the split of the two brothers. The story that I'm telling you. So they asked Rabbi Shlomo Halberstam. At that time, there was only one brother for all of his life, Baruch Hashem. <laughs> so, so they asked him, what would make our shul successful? So he said two things. Lots of light, very bright in the base medrash, and lots of svarim. The svarim will draw people there who, are, you know, they, can, they have all the svarim they need to learn and to research. 
and light. It should be bright. Then we have a Hayyim Yoyim. Remember the Hayyim Yoyim Gachevra? What does it say? The Baal Shem Tev Hot Lib Gahat Hot Gahat Hot, which means he loved Licht, light. I used to come home in the morning from shul to before the shear. Sometimes my wife is davening and it's a little dark and I say, the Baal of light, light. And I open all the curtains and all the lights. <laughs> light, light. His gallus, his gallus lit up. When you go into a place that's lit up and it has good lighting, and that's a skill, and it's specialty to have good lighting, right? It makes the experience very different. Dr. Rebbe says here that the way Hashem responds to our tfilos when we invest in a cheshben is not just giving us godliness, Moshe, but is galus. God reveals that experience to us. And that's a very different experience, Velvel, than just saying God is here. No, 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 no. In other words, this is, this is the issue. That what, if we invest hard this month in making a cheshben, not only will we get payback that will be blessed on Rosh Hashanah and Kippur with a good year, etc., etc., but it's going to be revealed. Right? It'll be clear. You'll see it. That's what he says. And that's why he adds the word, Bibchinas, his goddess. Kamashim Kosu. Yes, Hillel. Just want to add uh, that uh, neuroscientists today say that um, really the brain uh, wakes up according to light, and that one of the ways to sort of uh, stimulate optimal brain functioning is to sort of gradually introduce yourself to light, particularly through walking first thing in the morning. Really? Uh, that 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 sort of uh, that sort of is is central to activating the brain in a in a healthy way. Huh, so, thank you. Along with that. Yes, and, I, and, and walking first thing in the morning, very interesting. Well, we should walk to shul, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> so, and then al Rebbe says, I just, want to, I just want to say with that, you know, my morning routine is often I get up to, uh, and learn as the sun's rising over the hills here. And this morning, for the very first time, my teenage son was there when I got here this morning. We watched the sunrise together, so... Okay. <laughs> Baruch Hashem. To get this Bible on this day. I, and, 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 you know, just and since you mentioned that, I remember as a boy, and it, it, it left, you know, a, such a wonderful uh, impression, my father up early, you know, Shabbos morning in particular, every day he was up early because he had to go to work early. But Shabbos morning, he was already, when I got up, I would hear him learning, sitting at the table, learning Lakut Torah out loud, Yiddish and Hebrew, and, and, and it, 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 I just have fond memories of that. So uh, when we as fathers, you know, do that, believe me, and my girls, my girls remember when I would do the same thing, you know, uh, as they were children growing up. So believe me, it, you know, these things leave an impression and, 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 and make a great impact. Okay. Kumashikosov as it says, Kumashikosov as it says in the Posik, Smailoi, God's left, Tachas Leroshi, is under my head, Viyaminoi, and Hashem's right, Tichapkeni, embraces me. When is there the embrace, Yoinisin? When does Hashem embrace us? Sukkis. We sit in the sukkah and we're surrounded by a big hug called the sukkah. That's the godly embrace. So then it says, V'yeminoi, it's Hashem's right side, that, or right hand, metaphorically speaking, that embraces us. That's Sukkot and Simchus Torah. What about Smoiloi, Hashem's left, Tachas Roshi under my head, also alluding to Rosh Hashanah. The experience on, on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is smiley, is left. What do you mean left? Kavura. It's a serious day. It's a day of judgment. But the Alter Rebbe brings this to tell us that when we we invest in Elul, then we will feel Hashem's left acknowledging that we deserve a good, blessed year. So the bracha 
that will come to us on Rosh Hashanah and, and Yom Kippur will, be, will have the might of Gevura. In other words, I, I just want to exp- elaborate. Well, if, we, if, if, if Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, you would have only God's right blessing you, then you would still, you can argue, but wait a minute, the left might say you don't deserve it, or the, the left doesn't agree. But when you say, God's left supports the head, that means even the leftists agree that you should have a good Rosh Hashanah. So that's a Gaval de Gechidish, that a left <laughs> a leftist agrees that you deserve, that we deserve a, a good Rosh Hashanah. Let's continue. Shemarei Shashanah Yom Makipurim throughout the ten days from Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur who prinas Ma'ilai that is the level, the experience of the left prinas Yira which represents awe, fear, trepidation L'fisheoz whose man, his gavos machusi is borech why are you scared? Like I've told you many times, in the normal days, when a principal came into a room, you rose and you were quiet. You know, to mention my, my Rebbe, my Meshpia, Rabbi Yol Khan, when he would walk into the Shear in Borough Park, there wasn't a, a pin drop. There wasn't a pin drop. There was awe. There's a, this is a, a prominent Talmud Chochem and, 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 you know, of stature. You don't clap and you don't dance. You stand in awe and you rise. You know, a little bit more, whatever. The point is that since we're talking about Smoiloi, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are days of awe. They're not days of Simcha. Uh, by the way, this doesn't mean you should you walk around with your nose down. It's, it's not Tishabov. <laughs> Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is not Tishabov. Tishabov, we cry. Rosh Hashanah Kippur, if we cry, has to come from inside something that irks you about yourself and your neshama, your soul. Rosh Yom Kippur, of crying for the destruction of Beis Hamikdash. It's a simple thing. It's a, it's 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 behavior related. But Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, it's soul related. So what's the idea? The idea is, hey, it's a serious day. Just just think for a moment. You're going to a judge. Your life is on the line. I, I know I would be shaking and trembling. I mean, it, this is not a joke. It's not a joke. So, but, and, and he was saying that the life, meaning the soul life, my spiritual life, you know, where am I with my, my connection to Hashem? So this is Bepchinas Yira. This is awe. This is fear. Lefisha Oz, and he says, Lefisha Oz, whose man, his galus, Malchusay is Barich, because then is the time the of God's revelation, and therefore, since Hashem is as a king, Malchusay is Barich, v'lochein koyrin loy hamelech. That's why you know we all change from Hokel Hakadosh, and uh, we change to Hamelech Hakadosh, the Holy King, to the from the Holy God to the Holy King. Because the emphasis during the Aseris he made Shuvah is the king, HaMelech. And that's why in the davening, the Baal Tfilah who's designated to do chakras goes over, he walks from the back, kind of sta- you know, sta- moving up to the front in, in the sense of this is a special moment. And what are his first words? HaMelech, the King Malchus, God is here. The King, wake up, people, stand, right? ki Malchus Malchus. Next page. Ki Malchus Malchus because your kingship is the kingship of all worlds. Okay, I'm going to explain this tomorrow a little better, so we'll stop over here. I'm sorry I was a little late because of Rosh Chodesh davening, but we'll make it up. Any questions?
Yes. Thank you. And okay, Mr. Shem, from time to time, I'll, I'll look. I'll, I'll, I'll try to read some of the comments and see this move Eris. But you know, if we do all that, it's going to just take us so much longer. So I'm giving you. I'm. I'm. I'm giving yeah, over. Well, this is great. Yes, Jonas. Right. Yes. We didn't get there yet. I, we didn't even wait. Slow down. We're gonna get there. <laughs> did, did, did you? Did you? Did you? I'm not far. Did you? Did you? Were you? We we're learning. And we didn't get there yet. Why are you mentioning that? Because I feel why I mentioned it. Because I understood this mind was that in the, in the Nicola. Nicola said that <clears throat> Nicola said. So now, the Ozzelippus brings the marshal of Hamelech Basadeh, which he going to be talking about this, I mean, the dirty lead. Yes, but, but we're, not, we're not at that point in the mimer, you're jumping. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, what you're saying is right, you're innocent, but we're not there yet. There's, there's a progression. Yes, Moshe. Okay, so the question is, yes, just one question. So it's, it's, I really, I really, really appreciate that that how you, you brought out that, that the Alter Rebbe says that in order to really do effective tshuva, to bring begin the whole process of what we're talking about, you have to know who you are. So my question is, how do we know who we are? <laughs> That's my question. In, in your case, Moshe, ask your friends. They'll tell you good. <laughs> um, well, I might take you up on that. Okay. <laughs> Moshe, Moshe, when I asked my Mashpia Maristan, Reb Melech Tzuol, show him that question, he said, ask a real friend who will tell you the truth about yourself. Mm. And don't ask someone who'll say, oh, Moshe, you're the best. Ah! You're the Gabba. You've done so much for us. You're Gavaldic. You got Gan Eden. <laughs> anyway, for that, Moshe, you need to fabrain. You got to say Lechayim. And but in all seriousness, when a person is to themselves under their talus at a quiet moment, and they're not rushing, and they're able to think about themselves, Hashem, their neshama. Believe me, you can start making, you can, you can get in a little bit. And, you know, the, the trick is not to get morbid. Because, oy, I, when I start thinking about my neshama, I get, oy, vey, vey, did I mess up here, there, what, what a stain I have. So there's a balance, there's a balance. Because the Alter Rebbe brings out first how special the neshama is. You'll see soon. Yonison started to talk about it, you give me the Sarachamim. Which is, which is a key in the mimer, but let's wait for that till we get there. So, good question. Hold your horses. We'll get to it. Chavre, we'll see everyone tomorrow. Have a great day. Zay Good day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good chaydish. Good chaydish.